Hey all this is Jojo3 Sorcerer. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take your print from this to this without using support. So both of these were printed face down just like this uh, without support syndrome. So this is a big overhang in both cases but there's just some small details that I changed in this one compared to this one uh, that made it print a lot better. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I also want to show you a quick way to kind of replicate that uh, across a bunch of different holes. So Hopefully this helps you and I uh, hope that y'all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. All right, so a quick disclaimer before we get started. This video isn't based on Makers Muse video, how to 3D print boards without supports, Fusion 360 Masterclass. And that's where I actually learned how to do this, but he didn't go into a lot of detail on how to actually make this in Fusion 360. So I thought that I could add to this video by making kind of a supplement to where I'll take you step by step on how I actually made the design that he shows here in his video. And he actually goes over a bunch of different uh, designs for making boards without support. So this is a great video to watch if uh, you need and background on kind of the overall process so highly recommend this he's a great youtuber so just wanted to mention that before we got started so i thought that it might make more sense if we actually just show you the final product here in Prusa Slicer and I actually have one version that has the bridging method and then one version that doesn't have the bridging method just so that we can compare the two so after we slice the file let's go down and kind of see that first bridging layer. So we have the offset bore here. And then as we step up, this is the first layer, you know, of the overhang, right? And this is what we're trying to achieve. And this is what you would get if you didn't do this method. So the problem with this is if you think about the head of the 3D printer, it's basically trying to extrude this circle on thin air, which is an issue, right? Gravity affects plastic pretty easily. <laughs> and this, on the other hand, is just trying to bridge straight across. So really what we're doing is we're just trying to make a couple of bridges so that the circle is easier to form. So this is the first bridge that we try to make. And then if we go up another layer, you see that we bridge straight across in the opposite direction. So we go from this to this. So we bridge across, which is pretty easy for the printer to do. So we bridge one direction and then we bridge the other direction. You can see this one is just basically layering on to that circle. And then the last step is when we actually start to form the circle. And you can see why the circle turns out better because it has support under it. So we're making two layers of support in two directions, making a square. And then on top of the square, we're drawing the circle and using that square support. So hopefully that makes sense and helps you understand why this method works. And uh, now I'm just gonna show you how I achieved this and how we got the slicer to do this. All right, so here is the part here and I have the bolt inserted. Uh, it's M20 by 40, so it's a pretty big bolt, but I did that just so we could see everything once it's 3D printed a little bit easier. So obviously your bolt might be different size, so feel free to change this. The way I made this cutout, uh, I made this 0.4 millimeters wider than the head of the bolt and then 0.4 millimeters wider than the thread of the bolt. So hopefully you know how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. So now the next step is to select the block. And now we're gonna make that feature that I showed you in the slicer. So I go ahead and just project uh, this, use the P command or project command, and then click okay. So that gives you the circles around uh, those two points. We're gonna go ahead and hide that other sketch so we can see everything better. Okay, so now we're sketching on that plane. So now we're gonna create two center rectangles. Since this is on the center point, it's easier to do. And we're just gonna draw them kind of out like that. Okay, and then the constraint we wanna add is a tangent constraint. We're gonna make it tangent to here and then make this one tangent to the outside circle as well. And then we're also gonna make the other line tangent to the inside circle. So now you basically just wanna alternate which uh, circle you make it tangent for. So one side is gonna be tangent to the inside circle, one side is gonna be tangent to the outside circle. And that's the only sketch that we need. And now I'm gonna bring up my sketch again and gonna name it bridge. And so now, if you think about what we wanna do, we want this line to be drawn like we saw in the uh, slicer. So to do that, we're going to extrude everything else besides these two sides 0.2 millimeters because my layer height is 0.2 millimeters. So we're gonna go negative 0.2. 
Okay, and so you can see that it cut that out. And one way that you might wanna consider doing this is just to change the color of the face. So now we can see that we have extruded that out 0.2 millimeters. Now we wanna bring that sketch back up. And now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna basically extrude everything around the circle to give it that second layer. So just gonna select around the circle and this time we're gonna go negative 0.4 millimeters, so two layer heights. And now you can see that color change, but we still have that face on these two sides. And you can change that, this inside color as well if you want to. Uh, I'll change it to white just to show you all what's going on. And sometimes it doesn't let you select that if that sketch is showing, so go ahead and change that over and make sure it selects that face correctly. Okay, so now you see that we have our three layers. We have the top layer, and that's just going to come straight across. And the second layer is going to go in the opposite direction. And obviously it's also going to fill in behind here. And then the third layer is going to make our circle. So that's how you make this part. And now I'm going to print it off, but also want to show you all how to make this a lot easier to do. So if you have a bunch of these holes, it doesn't take you a long time. So now we're going to come over here and create a new component. And essentially what I want to do is to make a replica of this hole and just make it a solid body so that then we can just subtract away the solid body when we want to make this feature in our model. So if you imagine having a lot of these, it might take a long time, but this is a way to do this a lot more efficiently. So I went ahead and made another component and now we're going to create our sketch. And I'm just gonna project everything. So P is the hotkey. If you wanna to get to it another way, you can go up here to create, project include, and project, which is the hotkey P. And we're just gonna project all those faces that we just did. And we're also just gonna go ahead and project that just to have it. And so what I want you to think about is we're just filling in this hole now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this the length of the bolt shaft so that way you'll have the hole for the whole bolt. So that's how I'm gonna start off and hide the bolts again. So now whenever we cut out, we have the cutout for the whole bolt. And to turn our sketch back on. I'll make this attraction sketch. You need to try to remember to label your sketches. And so now we're going to extrude this all the way down to our surface each time. So click and hold, and then you should see that face get selected. And then you wanna also do the opposite side. And you can see this is 12.2, which is what we want. And then this other one is probably gonna be 12 now select that face you can see it's 12 so that was our original hole depth and then this last one is going to be 12.4 and again the way i'm selecting these is i just click and hold it gives me this option and then you want that face and you can see 12.4 okay so now if we remove everything get rid of this projection you'll see that we have that feature to where we can cut out this now so i'm going to go ahead and make another block and then import this so the way that you save one of these so that you can uh, use it in different uh, models that you make you can go ahead and right click on here and then click save copy as and then I'm just going to leave it as bore subtraction, save. And now over here, we should be able to see bore subtraction. So if I open this model up, you can see we have a construction plane. But now we have just this uh, model that we can insert into another block. So now I'm going to make a plane block here. We can go ahead and just make a new design. Save it as just like test. And then I'll just make a pretty basic block here just for demonstration purposes. So now we want to import our subtraction feature. So we insert into current design. And now you can see that it's in the right position actually, but a lot of times if you have a more complex model, it'll be in a different spot. So we're gonna just move it out of the way. And now we wanna join it to the center of that. So we're gonna click a symbol joint, which is also the shortcut uh, key J. And then we click here and then that center point will automatically display. And then we wanna flip the orientation. So now the body is in the right position. Click okay and go ahead and hide the joint. And now we're just gonna use the modify combine command. So we click on that. 
our target body is what we want to affect. So that's going to be our block. And then our tool body is going to be the subtraction body. Now I click OK. Now if we hide that, you see that we just cut that nice hole that we made with all the features. And the way that this is really helpful is now you can do that as many times as you want. You can pattern this component. Uh, you can know that it's uh, consistent. And then another good feature is you can actually update the size of this. So if you change your bolt size, uh, you just have to change this feature and then all the holes that you made with it will change as well. So now I'm just going to send it over to Prusa Slicer and we're going to print it out. And one thing that's important to mention is that this is specific for 0.2 millimeter layer height. So uh, if you don't have that layer height, it might not work. So again, 0.2 millimeter is important because that's what we use for our offset. And you can see here that we got the same effect that we got with the other version. Uh, you can see from the top here, we have that nice little square forming and then the circle. So I'm going to actually print off both versions of this, the version with the overhang feature and the version without so we can compare them directly. So I'm going to print that off now. All right, so here's a comparison between the two options. So this is the basic design without any support. As you can see, that has some issues there making the bore hole. And then this is the design that we made. And you can see there with the layers uh, as expected. And you can see that it just looks a lot more professional and uh, clean. And I think that it is a good option, especially if you're going to be giving this to a client or someone who's paying for prints. I think that this looks a lot better overall. And again, it doesn't require any post-processing, which is a big benefit of this method. So hopefully now y'all know how to do this and can implement it into your own designs. All right, so that's about it for this video. Hopefully this helps you make boards without supports. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond back as quickly as possible. And again, thank you for watching. Hope y'all have a great day and see you in the next one.